Hello there, and welcome to a little tutorial that I have had an idea for in the past couple weeks. Well, more like months, and just haven't really gotten around to. So today, I'm feeling motivated, and today, we're going to do this tutorial. This is a basics of the game, how to get started, how to get into a mech, how to shoot something. All of the newbie questions, hopefully in one bag. If I forget some things, that's probably going to happen because, well, I forget things. So, this is about MechWarrior Living Legends, specifically at this time 0 0.93. This should mostly apply to future versions, I would expect, as uh, not too, too much changes usually with the basics. So, just to go over one thing quick. When you're playing this game, it is generally recommended to be playing it on 64-bit. Uh, DirectX 9, some people find more stable. And this is Crisis, obviously, so it's going to be a bit of a resource hog. So, you know, uh, make sure that your computer's up to snuff, or that you're cutting down the graphics enough so that you have a reasonable frame rate and not too many crashes. Okay, so playing the game. Multiplayer internet game, and for this example, I'm going to go to... Bitch. Can simply double click there. Off we go. Apple load. And usually it's pretty quick. Uh, SSD, obviously, nice and fast. So, when a match is just starting, you will get a first loading screen where you load up the map, etc. And then you'll see displayed at the bottom, game will start in X amount of seconds. This is a old crisis trick, it's just how they work. What basically happens is everybody loads in and then 30 seconds later, a shorter loading screen happens and everybody's on the same page and in game. This is how it works, it happens every time. And here we are in game. And see the uh, spectating screen. Take a look at what's going on in the server. But you probably want to jump in the action, so press M to first select your team. I'm on clan, so joining clan is sensible. And then the map should pop up. If it doesn't, press M again a couple times to make sure it's there and click on a spawn point, and I'll bring up the map there just for a moment just so you can see what I was doing. Aerospace spawn at this air icon and mechs, and other vehicles spawn at the mech base. Uh, some bases do not have spawn capability, depends on the map. Generally, there's always going to be one main base that will have the ability to spawn everything you need. So, you're in the game. Around the area are these lovely signs, which contain all the pertinent information about most of the basics of the game. Not everything, but most. First to start, we're going to bring up how to use battle armor, briefly, just because you kind of need to know how to do that before you start with anything else. It controls like a standard FPS. You can lean uh, if the keys are bound with C and X, not really that useful though. Shift is run, space is jump jets, and she's a pretty handy little machine. You have a radar display at the bottom, tickets and such are displayed at the top. Number keys to which weapons. All very basic shooter stuff. So when I enter the base here, there will be an icon in the bottom corner that displays that I am in an area where I can purchase weapons and vehicles. The buy menu is by default bound to comma. And here we are, the lovely buy menu. It contains every single asset in the game, uh, obviously not aerospace if you're at the mech bay and vice versa, you cannot buy land vehicles at the aerospace bay, but you get the picture. So, 
a good mech for most people to learn the basics of this game. Uh, go to mechs and the Osiris Prime. Lovely first choice. Nice and simple. Mech will build and it will tell you what bay it's in and you can see this door comes up. And just FYI, this is kind of a condensed version of my little rant that I give to New Zealand when they join. Oh, the mech is indicated with no driver. We'll go up onto this gantry, fall onto the mech, and press F to get in. Okay, a lot of stuff. Let's go over it one by one. So, at the top we still have our objectives display and time. Not much time left for this match, but that's fine. It's just a testing match. Uh, as we move over to the right, there is the weapons display. I'll go over that in a moment. To the right in the middle, there's your current amount of money. On a testing server, you have basically infinite. In an actual match, you will earn that money. On the bottom right, there is the display of my mech and its current internal status. The bottom center, there is the local radar, which is relative to my camera. There's also a bunch of other displays. Uh, we'll go over those in a moment. Uh, the bottom left is currently empty, and the top left is the map radar, which is relative north and south. Always display the same, no matter what heading you're in, which makes it handy for calling people out and actions. So, to start with, the mech, it controls sort of like a first-person shooter, but you're in a vehicle now, so things are changing. Uh, the crosshair in the middle, it has little pippers around it, and a rangefinder on the bottom that tells you how distant objects are, heading, pitch, etc. Those are all mostly for later when you uh, know how to call out where targets are, uh, which can be a handy ability to have. So, to start, let's start with some movement. So we have a throttle in mechs. You can disable this, it's not recommended. Uh, press W to put that throttle up to maximum. Similarly, press S to put that throttle in reverse. And when you're moving, press the X key to hit the brakes. Now, the mouse controls the torso on top. Think of it like a turret on a tank. You can pan around, and this mech has 360 rotation, so it can go all the way around. Uh, the A and D keys control the rotation of the body. Now, I'm keeping the torso steady so that you can see on the map, there's an orange line that always indicates what way the legs is facing relative to you. And this line is also visible on the map display. It's just a little bit less handy up there. So, we can control where our torso is pointing, we can control where the legs are pointing, and we can move. X. Don't stop on a dime. Mechs do not accelerate instantaneously. If you are moving, try and make sure that you know where you're going and that you know of any obstacles on the way, how to stop quickly, or stop on time, sorry, to be behind cover. It's also quite handy. And on mechs with limited traverse, if somebody is outside of your traverse range, you will have to rotate the torso to make sure that you can shoot at them. That's quite important, and you can definitely get blindsided if somebody is suddenly in an area where you can't fire. Similarly, up and down, a lot of mechs can point very high up and very far down, but some targets will manage to be in a place you can't shoot. So, 
Uh, and the final movement thing, there are two extra systems, jump jets and mask. Some mechs do not have either, some mechs have both, uh, some of the Shadowcats specifically. Uh, these are extra movement systems that can help you get around the map and jump into surprising places, or at least get to surprising places. For jump jets, it's a simple space bar. Sends us way up in the air, but you can also make it move you in specific directions by pushing one of the movement keys while jumping. This can be used to odd shots, uh, get move surprisingly, other stuff like that. Another key that is sort of related to movement, the power key, is P. Our mech systems are off, not going to move, you can't do anything, you can power back on by pressing the key again. This is a necessity when you want to repair the mech. You have to go into a mech bay like this, or a repair bay, which looks like kind of a hollow box. Get into the middle, power down, and your mech will be repaired. And I suppose, actually, finally, there's also the ability to crouch by pressing control when stationary. You cannot move in this state. You're pretty vulnerable if you're in a bad place. However, it does give some benefits to weapons fire. I'll cover those in a moment. Oh, weapons. The main point of driving a mech. It's a lovely time. Now, before I was interrupted by a map change, if you happen to fall and miss your vehicle, it can sometimes do that to you. So be careful around the legs of mechs. It's not a healthy place to stay. Much better way to do this. If you're on the ground and your mech is up there, just up a little and fall towards its face. All right, so, the weapons screen. There's a lot of numbers and a lot of different things going on up there. Your weapons are indicated by the firing group that they are assigned to, their name and their current state, their range, and their ammunition. Lasers have infinite ammunition, as do all energy weapons, but everything else, you have to worry about bullets left. Now, the firing groups are by default, and this can be different depending on what you're set up. The first group is always left click. The second group is always right click. And if you have more weapons, they'll be on the middle click. Or alternative buttons that you may have up to six. You may also press the associated numbers above or WASTA to fire weapons. Now, let's say you have way too many lasers on the first group to spread them out a bit so that you run a little bit less risk of blowing yourself up, which I'll cover in a moment. To manipulate this group system, you can pan over the weapons using the arrow keys, and turn on or off weapons using control. Uh, that would be right control. So I'm going to turn off all my lasers except for one. There it is. And I'll turn on another. There we go. I'll turn on all four again. Ah, perfect. Now, to provide some impetus for that, in MechWarrior you have the heat gauge. 
which is at the bottom of the display there. There are some lines on it, which one of them is orange and one of them is red. As you fire weapons, use jump jets, use mask, etc., you will heat up. Heat is manageable up until the orange line. Over the orange line, you start to have problems. If you go over the red line, you're probably going to die. So, I can possibly demonstrate that in this mech. It doesn't run too hot. Can we do it? Oh, I think we can do it, yeah. And we've overheated, we're taking serious damage, and die. So. Try not to overheat. It's generally a really bad time. Otter maps will make you overheat faster. So, be aware of where you are and what kind of weapons your mech has. Physical weapons and missiles are generally cooler. Lasers and other energy weapons are not. They run very, very hot. So, be aware. Play with care. Now, one trick that you can do to reduce heat, other than, say, putting two of the lasers on one button and the other two lasers on the other button to spread out the heat, also put them on chain fire by using the back tick under backspace, chain fire. and Betty will announce chain fire. And then your weapons will fire in sequence, one after the other. Like so. You will lose the instantaneous damage of firing them all at once, but you will run much cooler and have a much easier time on some maps with some mechs. Not all mechs are built to be able to fire all their weapons at once. So, be careful. And some weapons also have minimum ranges. It uh, gets more complicated as you go. Now, another thing you can do is when you are in a mech bay like this, you can sell your vehicle, get a little bit of cash back. If the mech is damaged, you will get less back for it. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? So. When things go very wrong, you want to eject. This is generally not advised, but there are certain times where ejecting is better than going down with the ship. To do so, while the mech is active, press F twice. You are launched into the air and away from your possibly flaming mech. And destroy. This also has the effect of making your cockpit armor destroyed, uh, as it had to be destroyed to let you get out. That's generally a bad thing, so be careful if you accidentally eject. Make sure that you go and repair that at the nearest mech bay as soon as possible. Now, once you've powered down the mech, if you press F, you'll just get out leisurely. And you can get back in, and you won't do any damage because you're actually using the uh, mech the way it's supposed to be. Uh, 